can't do it. I need an expert here. I need someone who really knows how to shoot these things. a big issue for some people to criticize the Harper government. Um, and then today there's a presentation by Toronto's police chief, uh, Blair, to a meeting of the chiefs of police in Edmonton that will support the registry, which I don't find the least bit surprising because the chiefs of police have always supported the registry. So, so what? But down on the ground where real policing is being done, my guest, Constable Randy Coons, Edmonton Police Service, says the vast, vast majority of people participating in an online survey with Blue Line Forum um, do not support it. Constable, when you do your daily work um, and you attend calls wherever they are, and you maybe have a suspect identity, you've got a, a residence identity you're going to, does the long gun registry play into your decision making in, in, in those cases? Not at all. The reason is, um, regardless if he has no firearms license, doesn't mean he doesn't have a firearm. If he does have a firearms license, it doesn't mean that if there's any firearms in the house because he's legally allowed to lend them to anybody with a proper license. The bottom line is, no matter what the situation, the police have to go and get him. That's why we have, we do things the way we do. We have tactical if we have some issues or some concerns. And the bottom line is, regardless of what he has or what he doesn't have, we have to go get him. The Canadian Police Association, your organization, says it is a valuable tool to you. The registry is. Is that, is that true? The only time I've ever used it was a gentleman came in to turn in a firearm and he wanted to donate it. And he did not have his certificate on him. We used the database to get his registration number so it could be turned over to be uh, uh, deactivated so that it could be used as a training aid for the Canadian Firearm Safety Course. That's the only time I've ever used the uh, firearms database. Does it, um, does it, it could it in fact in sort of impair your ability? I guess if you paid attention to a constable, which you tell us you don't, if you did, it might it might impair your work in some way. It, it might lead you down a, a, a road that was not true. Well, that's exactly it, because uh, if you're doing a search warrant, the database is useless. Uh, if you were going to search for firearms, for uh, whether it be, uh, let's say it's a domestic, uh, we could have a, a, a married woman who has firearms registered to her, or a married man that has firearms registered to her. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can use the database alone to search for firearms, because they're legally allowed to lend those firearms to anybody, so you could be going into a house you can't go on a fishing trip on, on a search warrant. And there, we, I've had information from our National Weapons Enforcement Team who deal with that exclusively. And they said there's no way you could ever obtain a search warrant based solely on the information of, on the firearms registry. Yeah. It, it just doesn't, uh, it, it just doesn't make sense because the, the way it's set up, it, it's not criminal based. It's simply registry based. Not much different than registering a vehicle. The information's there, and when the transfers happen, it goes to a new owner. But there's really very little difference. Um, you can't prevent impaired drivers. You can't prevent uh, vehicle collisions by having a registry. You certainly can't prevent crime by having a gun registry. As you go into that domestic, as you go into a house that you don't know, as you go into a scene that you're unsure about, you know something's happening, you don't know what. I mean, you're prepared. Constable, you've got to be prepared for the worst at all times, don't you? Well, that's exactly it. Everything we deal with is an unknown from the, the traffic guy that pulls over a car. Everything's unknown, and, and we deal with ourselves accordingly. And if you look at our our uh, stats as far as Edmonton Police Service members who have been killed on the job, right. um, it, it's infinitely low. I mean, one is too many as far as I'm concerned, but it does happen. And when you look at it, um, the way we conduct ourselves in Edmonton, uh, there's times we've been lucky, but most of the times it's just the intelligent training that we go through and we deal with things properly. And if we have to overdo it a little bit by using tactical in certain situations where at the end of it, in hindsight, we look and go, well, we probably didn't need them, but everything everything worked out, nobody got hurt, including the person we were dealing with. That makes sense. And we've been doing that for 118 years in the Edmonton Police Service. Uh, quite successfully. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Constable, stand by. Uh, here's a guy who's uh, not only working as a police officer in the street, giving you that version of what's going on in the world, but he's also canvassed fellow officers across the country, 2,600 of them. The vast majority, 2,400, do not support the long gun registry. It is a valuable part of their work. Back after this. This is Rutherford on 630 Chad, Alberta's information superstation. I guess Randy Coons, Edmonton Police Service member, uh, crime investigator with the Police Service in Edmonton, and um, I've got about a minute, not even that long. Uh, Constable, then, um, this is such a political hot potato. Um, uh, do you see any change really coming? Oh, in a way, yeah. Um, I'm hoping that people will actually listen because uh, there's no... I specifically did this and, and made it known that this was unscientific. The reason is when you get a scientific survey or a poll, you can twist that. I basically asked a simple, straightforward question. I mean, we vote governments in with the mark of an X. Very simple, straightforward. Anyone can figure that one out. But I'm sure that somewhere there's probably a spoiled ballot here and there. But uh, the one thing that the public should know is many of the chiefs are quoting a, a, a certain statistic that I'd like people to be aware of yeah. and understand that it's, it's false. Um, I've read numerous times that they say between 1991 and 2005, the murder rate with firearms had gone down by 43% due to the registry. What people have to realize is the registry did not even come into effect until January the 1st, 2003. So the chiefs are using a stat with 12 years of where the registry wasn't even in effect. I mean, it must be quite a program if it was solving crime and dropping the rate when it wasn't even implemented yet. Amazing. And, and I don't know if they're aware or if they're just feeding off things that are handed to them, but anybody that knows anything about the registry came in, you had to have a license and you had to have your guns registered by 2003. And since then, the government has put in I believe five or six amnesty periods mm -hmm. to have people register their firearms. And several provinces throughout Canada said, we're not prosecuting for that, and Alberta is one of them. So when you get that 1991 to 2005 stat, and here's a police chief saying that, just keep in mind that the registry wasn't even in effect until 2003. Constable, uh, listen, thanks for, uh, I think, maybe some courage to do this, but thanks for bringing to light the, the real world of, uh, of your world. And listen, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, sir. Constable Randy Coons, Edmonton Police Service. Thank you very much, Randy. Back after this. I need an expert here.